In order to understand the AC system, we have to start with the refrigerant. Now, the refrigerant is a chemical used in the AC system. Now, when it's in its gas state, it's able to collect, absorb, and hold heat. When it's converted into a liquid state, it releases that heat. And that, that process is repeated over and over again. That's basically how the air conditioning system works. In order for this to happen, though, the pressures have to be right and all the components have to work properly. There are five major components of an air conditioning system. Compressor and clutch, condenser, orifice tube expansion valve, evaporator, accumulator filter dryer. All of these components are joined by hoses. Here's the heart of the system right here. This is the AC compressor. Now th this compressor here has an electromagnetic clutch on the end of it. And if you look at it, right now the compressor is not engaged. In order to engage the center part, let me show you. We're going to connect this to our power supply. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Right now, you'll see that the pulley turns free. Let's engage it. And you're going to see that now the whole assembly is going to turn. That's actually turning the inside of the compressor. The compressor is a pump. It has an inlet and outlet suction discharge side. So when it's engaged like this, or when it's disengaged. When it's disengaged, it's going to freewheel just basically be an idle pulley for the belt. Here are the three most popular condenser designs. You're going to find one of these on your vehicle. Now the first design is, this is the round tube style. This is the type that they used on the R12 system. When, on the R134A refrigerant, the tube diameter has changed, it's smaller. Also, there's more fins per inch on, on, our, on our core here. Now, this is a unique condenser right here. This is a parallel style condenser. What's unique about this is, each one of the tubes are independent from one another. Now the condenser we have on our vehicle is this one here. This is a serpentine style condenser. What that means is, it has one continuous tube throughout the whole condenser. How this works is simple. We have the hot vapor from pulling the warmth from the, the inside of the vehicle is entered into the condenser. As it cir circulates through the condenser, it goes to the bottom, it's expelled as a liquid. That condensing process happens as the, the refrigerant cools on the condenser. It has the, the tubes attached to the fins. The air flows through this and makes that chemical reaction happen. When the refrigerant leaves the condenser before it enters the evaporator, it has to be metered. On our truck, what it uses is called an orifice tube. Now, if you look at this, there's a screen on both sides. It's in the middle of that, there's a little brass tube. That refrigerant is forced through that brass tube into the evaporator. As a matter of fact, there's even a heavy duty style of that exact same tube for like extreme cases. Maybe like when the temperature is a lot hotter or a heavy duty application. Towing a trailer, this would be handy. On the orifice tube style system, it uses a clutch cycling switch. What this does is cycle the compressor clutch on and off. Basically, that's controlling the temperature pressure of the evaporator. Now, another style system, this, this is called an expansion valve. Now, the orifice size of this can vary, and the way it does that is through the capillary tube. This tube will either sense the temperature of the evaporator core or the tube. It can change the diameter of that orifice that to change the amount of refrigerant that goes into the evaporator. The nice thing about this system is the compressor runs all the time. The bad thing about the system is there's moving parts in here. So the, the problem is if any of those parts come, become corroded, this could stick wide open or, or all the way closed and not work at all. Now here's another type of an expansion valve. This looks a totally different than this, but they both do the exact same thing. This is the evaporator. This is the part that actually gets cold inside your vehicle. This is the core that mounts into the box. It's either going to be on the outside firewall of the vehicle or it'll be inside. Now the way this works, once the refrigerant passes through the valve, either the orifice tube or the expansion valve, it enters into the evaporator. When it enters into the evaporator, to give you an idea what it looks like, if you take a can of spray paint, you hold the nozzle down, how the spray paint comes out of the nozzle, that's exactly what the refrigerant looks like going into the evaporator. That goes into the evaporator and then it'll absorb the heat from the air that passes through it. Once it absorbs that heat, the, the refrigerant inside the evaporator will boil and it's returned through the suction line back to the compressor. On your system, you're going to have either this, this is called a receiver dryer, or you're going to have this, this is called an accumulator. The difference is very simple. Uh, the receiver dryer, this is designed to only receive the refrigerant and only allow the liquid refrigerant to go to an expansion valve. So if you have an expansion valve, you're going to have this style st system on it. Now the accumulator is just the opposite. Now the accumulator, this goes on the outlet pipe of the evaporator. This actually goes before, this is the connection right before the compressor. The compressor line hooks to the outlet of the accumulator and goes to the compressor. That's the suction line. Now what this does, the refrigerant enters into the accumulator, goes to the bottom, and all of the liquid rec refrigerants held at the bottom of the accumulator and the vapor only is allowed to go to the compressor. Okay, now that we've shown you all the parts and pieces, let's show you how it works.
A compressor pumps the refrigerant under pressure throughout the system. After leaving the compressor, the refrigerant enters a condenser, where it transfers heat to the outside air. Next, an orifice tube or expansion valve on some vehicles transform the refrigerant into a cold gas. From there, the cold gas passes through an evaporator and absorbs the heat from inside the vehicle. At the same time, a fan blows across the fins of the evaporator, chilling the air that enters the passenger area. The refrigerant then passes through a dryer to filter out any moisture before returning to the compressor to begin the process again. As with any job, to do it right, you'll need the right tools. The nice thing is that jobs we'll be covering today don't require a large, expensive assortment. In case where a specialty tool is required, be sure to check with AutoZone's Loan a Tool program. They have many specialty tools that can help you complete your job a lot quicker and easier. The very first thing you almost have to have in order to properly diagnose the system is a gauge set. You will also need your basic hand tools, a socket set, screwdrivers, and assortment of pliers, snap ring pliers, and a flashlight should be sufficient. If you have a noise you're trying to find, a good stethoscope can be a handy tool to have. An event thermometer is useful if you want to get an accurate reading of the AC temperature. You'll also need to get an air compressor to properly flush the system. If you don't have a compressor, you should pay a shop to flush the system for you. It's a step you don't want to skip. Be cautious when working under the hood. If the engine has been running, components will be extremely hot, so be careful what you touch. When working around a running engine, it is important to be alert and never wear loose clothing or a necktie that can get tangled in belts, pulleys, or the fan. Be cautious when working with refrigerant. If refrigerant is discharged from a can, a hose, or component, it is very cold and can cause skin injury. Never try to add refrigerant to the high side of the system. If you have to lift the vehicle, never work under it until it has been secured with wheel blocks and securely positioned on jack stands. A hydraulic jack alone is never enough. Be cautious when working with oils and chemicals. Many are damaging to the groundwater environment and toxic to people and animals. Never drain or pour chemicals into the ground or sewer systems. Local municipalities and counties offer resources for proper disposal. And always remember to wear your safety glasses. Get the entire DVD for this repair and all other procedures covered in the complete car care series at your local AutoZone store.